What's going on everyone? I'm back with another video and this video is going to be looking at the La Liga match between Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. Barcelona ended up winning the match four goals to two against Atletico. And before we get into the tactics behind the match, check out both my books. They're online on Amazon and there's links in the description below. Also be sure to check out Keyframe. It's how I'm making this video and let's get right into the tactics behind the match. So Barcelona went with a structure very similar to how a Pep Guardiola team might shape up with a back four with narrow fullbacks and Danny Alves has a tendency to come more as an inverted fullback narrow in the field especially when they're overloading this left hand side. Now through the midfield they go with a diamond midfield shape with Sergi Busquets at the holding midfield position. Ferran Torres is the number nine but often able to come deeper to create three attacking midfielders. This allows players like Gavi and Jordi Alba to have a very fluid approach to this left hand side. We often see Gavi come narrow, overloading the space between the lines, and Jordi Alba coming higher up the field. Then this overload on the left hand side allows Adama Traore to create isolation against the Atletico Madrid fullback, and this was very predominant in the first half when Atletico went with a back four. So as we see, the isolation of Adama Traore and Atletico Madrid left back Hermoso became very dangerous early on throughout the match. At the beginning of the match, Atletico went with a 4-5-1, seeing the wide midfielders often advance higher up the field looking like a 4-3-3. Lamar played a key role and had the most fluid position on the team, jumping higher up the field and dropping deeper. So he was often the one pressing central defenders and then dropping deeper alongside central midfielders, giving him a lot of area to cover and often leaving space because of the large amount of jumping he had to do. In the second half, Atletico Madrid moved to more of a 5-3-2 to try and get something out of the game with central forwards pressing from out to in. Barcelona in build-up used Ter Stegen to split both of their central defenders creating a back three and how Barcelona looked to counter this high press from Atletico was dropping a more attacking midfielder alongside Sergio Busquets. This gave them an extra passing option into the central area of the field, narrowing the midfield shape and providing more access to the wide area where Barcelona could progress around the block. They also had a natural number 10 in a three-man midfield with their winger and their central forward pinning the back five of Atletico, allowing for a number 10 to get free just beyond the holding midfielders of Atletico Madrid. Now later in the game, especially when Barcelona went down to 10 men, we saw them push their wing backs further forward and join the central midfielders to then create a diamond shape that may have been accidental but became very clear just by the way Atletico Madrid were pressing. And then they had a four diamond two shape oftentimes in their high block, even though I'm not sure this was a deliberate change in structure, but it's more how they use their man orientation against Barcelona and how Atletico Madrid ended up shaping their team for the last quarter of the match. Barcelona would still go with their diamond structure, deriving from their midfield three with Sergio Busquets as the holding midfielder. Now we can really see the Barcelona shape in the midfield third with Dani Alves on this right hand side, his tendency to move narrow to create an overload in the central corridor and decrease the amount of distance he had to travel when he would transition. Busquets was a lone holding midfielder at the base of a four-man diamond. And here we start to see Gavi inverting to overload the space between the lines in the half space against Atletico Madrid and Adama Traore creating isolation in an overload and isolate concept that was very predominant against Atletico Madrid throughout the match. And we see the hyper compactness where a concept like overload and isolate would be very effective because of Atletico's Madrid hyper compactness and shifting to one side and made them very susceptible to switch the fast switches across the field and progression around their block. Atletico Madrid in possession often went with a back three and a single pivot of Koke. Now in possession of the ball, Atletico Madrid made many unforced errors, but unlike them, they made these errors playing first line passes instead of losing the ball higher up the field where they can then counter press and transition effectively. But we have Luis Suarez and Jal Felix playing higher up the field, looking to then run beyond or check between the lines and moving off of one another to try and unbalance the Barcelona team. Here we have the Barcelona back four, the four-man midfield of Barca in their defensive phase, 
and two more advanced players. This created a 4-4-2 for Barcelona against Atletico Madrid's back three in their five-man midfield with their wing backs holding the width throughout their team, allowing for a midfield triangle to use asymmetry to try and progress and cause problems for Barcelona higher up the field. Now again in the second half, we have Atletico Madrid going with a back three with their wide central defender drifting wider in this example. Three-man midfield again with Colque dropping deeper to attract pressure from Barcelona and a very narrow midfield structure allowing for the potential for Jal Felix or Luis Suarez to drop deeper and try and create a third man concept to then progress vertically up the field. This was pretty easily covered by Barcelona's 4-4-2 as their two central midfielders matched up quite well against Atletico Madrid's more advanced midfielders and the wide players of Barcelona could easily press the wide central defenders or the wing backs depending on the situation. And this is where we're going to wrap up the analysis. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.